Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up the banners, let the anthems rise. Through Christ our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Oh, oh, oh. great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, today the church celebrates, uh, uh, remembers St. Bonaventure, a wonderful saint uh, known for his wisdom, knowledge and his intellectual abilities. And of, of course the ordo would give... Um, um, white and here uh, not able to get the white, white chasuble as of now so we are using the green uh, just to bring to our mind uh, the life of this great saint known for his keen memory and unusual intelligence he mastered the philosophy theology wrote extensively and defended the Catholic Church, of course, joined the order of Franciscans. And even amidst the Franciscans himself, he had to defend people who were against mendicant orders. And he was the one who wrote extensively like St. Thomas Aquinas. That's why he, he was also, he's also celebrated on par with St. Augustine, St. Thomas Aquinas. And, and St. Bonaventure also has contributed to the church in, 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 through his extensive writing through his uh, intellectual abilities. That's why he is also um, declared as the doctor of the church. And going through his life, a simple person, but extremely gifted with his intellectual abilities. And he wrote extensively. And uh, it's always uh, nice uh, to see how God, from moment to moment, raises people of this sort, brings people of this sort to do his ministry because uh, the pastoral ministry of the kingdom uh, does not alone uh, um, spread with people uh, with, uh, with, with, uh, with a simple uh, uh, gifts and simple uh, intelligence. But we also need people of this sort who are wise, who are extremely gifted. Not that all of us should have this kind of gifts, but God brings the right people at the right moment because we also need to uphold our tradition we also need not the oral tradition, we, we might lose it, but we also need people who would be good in writing and defend the church. Of course, that is also one of the reasons why we are gifted with the scripture because people wrote it, not just with the oral tradition, but people who wrote, who wrote down the tradition. And St. Bonaventure uh, is, uh, is a person who is credited with this particular gift, of course, given by God. And he's also a person who is uh, well versed in philosophy and theology and studied extensively on St. Augustine and, and, and great philosopher Aristotle himself. And uh, as we begin this Holy Eucharist, what we need to remember is this. All of us are gifted with some special charism and God has created us with a special gift. We need to put that particular gift uh, into practice and use it for the kingdom and for the ministry and to spread God's message to the people. For the moments we have buried our gifts and remain within our own selves. Let's feel sorry and ask the Lord's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, our new my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. So, Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. Does the axe claim more credit than the man who wields it? A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 10, verses 5 to 7 and 13 to 16. The Lord of the host says this, O to Assyria, the rod of my anger, the club brandished by me in my fury, I sent him against a godless nation. I gave him commission against a people that provokes me to pillage and to plunder freely and to stamp down like the mud in the streets. But he did not intend this. His heart did not plan it so. No, in his heart was to destroy, to go on cutting nations to pieces without limit. For he has said, By the strength of my own arm, I have done this, and by my own intelligence, for understanding is mine. I have pushed back the frontiers of peoples and plundered their treasures. I have brought their inhabitants down to the dust. As if they were a bird's nest, my hand has seized the riches of the peoples. As people pick up deserted eggs, I have picked up the whole hurt, with not a wing fluttering, not a beak opening, not a chirp. Does the axe claim more credit than the man who wields it, or the saw more strength than the man who handles it? It would be like the cudgel controlling the man who raises it, or the club moving what is not made of wood. And so the Lord of the host is going to send a wasting sickness on his stout warriors. Beneath is plenty, a burning will burn like a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Let your response be, The Lord will not abandon His people. They crush your people, Lord. They afflict the ones you have chosen. They kill the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless child. Your response? The Lord will not abandon His people. And they said, The Lord does not see. The God of Jacob pays no heed. Mark this, most senseless of people, fools, when will you understand? Your response, the Lord will not abandon his people. Can he who made the ear not hear? Can he who formed the eye not see? Will he who trains nations not punish? Will he who teaches men not have knowledge? Your response, the Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord will not abandon his people, nor forsake those who are his own. For judgment shall again be just, and all true hearts shall uphold it. Your response? The Lord will not abandon his people. Gospel Acclamation Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Chapter 11, verses 25 to 27. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for, it is, for that is what it pleased you to do. 
Everything has been entrusted to me by my father. And no one knows the son except the father. Just as no one knows the father except the son. And those to whom the son chooses to reveal him. The gospel of the law. Dear friends, as we continue to read the book of prophet Isaiah and we also read the gospel according to St. Matthew, in today's first reading we hear this ode to Assyria, the rod of my anger and the verses that follow. The rod literally here does not mean the rod that is going to bring punishment. But it is said, this is the rod that is compared with the rod of Aaron. This is the rod with which Moses helped people to move out of Egypt. So it's a rod of salvation, rod of hope, rod of liberation and rod of freedom. And as you go through this, you will also, from the book of prophet Isaiah, because this is a very important book for us to understand the whole ministry of Jesus and how the whole idea of remnant, the remain, the remains would be here, Judah, and that will be also compared as a stump. This is a little stump that remains, the rest of it all is destroyed and how this particular stump or the shoot that sprouts and that is how we also get this phrase uh, shoot, shoot of Jesse. How the whole nation is going to be built and how the Messiah is going to uh, rebuild the kingdom. So there is always the, the, the hope, the message of hope that is, that is there. And in the gospel today, though it's a very small gospel passage, but it's a beautiful gospel for all of us to, to nourish. Here, Jesus is not against the clever. He's not against the intellectual capacity Sometimes uh, we, we, we might be very self-critical saying, okay, intellectual, uh, Jesus is against the, the gift of intelligence. No. What is more important here is the intellectual capacity is different from intellectual pride. Again, the simple, the humble uh, does not mean you, 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 you are foolish. It does not mean the stupidity. It's not people who are stupid are going to uh, accept the gospel. No. It is humility. People who are humble, who are simple. You can be clever and still you can be humble. This is a combination. And it's also said it is heart, it is heart that is the home of the gospel. It is not the head. And that is why we need to, we need to understand this whole idea here. God's message is revealed to people who are simple, who are humble. It is, it is with the intellectual pride and arrogance that actually we, we, we stop getting, uh, getting inspired by the gospel message because our head is full. Even it, this, is, this is actually the pride that caused Israel to fall. It is a pride that caused Judah to fall. Had they been a little more simple and humble to listen to the words of the prophets, everyone would have been spared. So, dear friends, the, the gospel passage today tells all of us, invites all of us to grow in our intelligence. We need to read a lot. We need to understand a lot. But at the same time, we need to be simple and humble because all that we have is only gift of God. Without Him, we are rubbish. We are, we are, we are nothing. And as long as we have this mindset that everything that we have is from the Lord and always it is, it is heart that receives the gospel. So we need to put out all our mental constructs and listen to the newer messages. That's why in everyday, day-to-day -day life, what is more important is let's have this mindset. I can also be wrong. The way I look at my dad will be very different from the way I, my sibling will look at my dad. The way I look at my mom will be very different from the way I look at my dad. 
the way I look at my sibling, the way I look at my relatives, the way I look at people is all because of my previous experiences. But my experiences themselves is not absolute. The way I have behaved years back would have been very different from the way I am right now today. So people on the other end could also be right. Why are we not open to the newer messages, newer ways of thinking? So dear friends, during this Holy Eucharist, let us pray that we may be a little more humble and a little more simple. What does it mean? The practical way of living humility is this. The others also will be right. On the other hand, I may also be wrong. Once I have this mindset, a lot more newer insights will come into my life. I, I will be simple and humble. This will be the starting point for us to be exalted for sure. The day I humble myself, God will raise us to the heights which you and I can never imagine. We'll take our breath, we ask you take our hearts, we love you take our lives, oh Father we are yours, we are yours, yours as we stand at the table you say. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for good and the good of all His holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes a prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and George Anthony Sam, our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the service command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.